What's up, everybody? We are back here inside of Mother's Cover 3709 James Street in Syracuse, New York. And of course, I am here with Coach Hicks as we have made a habit of this because you love coming to Mother's Cover. So, Hicksie here with us, the strength and conditioning guru, the bridge between Syracuse and the NFL for many, many years, and a good friend. So, happy to have you back, Coach. Glad to be here. I love to eat, so I'm always glad to come to Mother's Cover. Yeah, and we have you on, we, we switched the angle, so now you got the side view here. So you chose the omelet for today, and we got different ones. I went ham, broccoli, and cheese, and you went with the veggies. Here's the veggies, you know, trying to be healthy. All right. What's in that veggie omelet? Uh, broccoli, mushrooms, onions, and tomatoes. Very good. Now, there's been some different things going on up at campus, some different camps and whatnot. When you think about coaching and being a part of, you know, camps, what were some of the key things that you always felt like if a kid left with nothing else, they had to leave with with these things? What are those things? Um, you automatically know if a kid comes to camp. They're doing something they want to get better. They need to be at the beach, the lake, vacation, whatever. And that's what we always say. We appreciate the fact that they're coming because yeah. they want to get better. Um, the camps now have turned into big recruiting tools. The kids want to get a verified height, weight, and yeah. see. But, but really, um, I think what a kid leaves with is not necessarily the technique that they'll learn because uh, they're going to be coached by their high school coaches. Yeah. Not necessarily uh, the exposure that they get, because you know you got 400 kids in camp. Everybody's not going to be recruited. Yeah. But I think if they leave with know the, knowing the importance of playing hard, playing to the whistle, uh, there's a couple of things that can't be coached. Effort and attitude will get you done. Kids get recruited off of effort and attitude. They may not make the best play, yeah. but you always know what you can count on. Yeah. And, and when you're in a camp, it's just like when pro scouts come to practice. You wonder, when they come to practice, they've got every table. They've already seen everything. They've met with the trainer. They know every injury. They've met with the strength coach. They know all the measurements. And you know, I've, I've had chances of going to scouting myself, and I've talked to guys that you only look for when they come to practice. Where do you stand in the drills? Are you at the front of the line so you get three shots? Yeah. Or do you stand in the middle of the back of the line so the younger guys take all the work? What's your body language when you get a mistake? Yeah. Uh, when a coach jumps on you, how do you react? Do you look them in the face and accept it, or do you turn your head and walk away? Yeah. There are all the things that they go into their report as to the type of player they'll end up being once the team makes them successful. The same thing happens in high school. Yeah. It's all kind of same things that college coaches look for because you're going to make an investment in the scholarship on the school. How does he interact with others? What's his effort level? What's his demeanor on the field? You know, just because he's a little bit better than other kids. Is he a bully? Is he a, or is he, you know what? He shakes it off, puts a great move on somebody, pats them on the back, and shakes their hand. Yeah. You know? And they're all things that are very, you can't measure them as far as height, weight, and speed, but you can measure them by seeing it and watching it. Just like we mentioned a little earlier, uh, <coughs> I get a kick out of when you put the post up on different times up there with you. Yeah. And I get you know comments from former players. I got a comment the other day on this one from when we were here for the, the last time uh, when we had the superb fish dinner. Yeah. But, uh, Shane Shanley who's now the, the sheriff here in town, uh, and made a comment. Uh, his dad made a comment. Shane was said he used to be more coach hands, but there's only one. I said, they're probably not ready for more than one. <laughs> but, um, you know, I remember when he was in our camp and ended up being a walk-on that started for us. Yeah. And, um, based on pure want to and taking advantage of his abilities. We saw him in our camp. He had very, had very fast hands. And he was very, very strong. Yeah. That's the thing he could control, you know? We had Michael Acheon in our camps. His dad, Gary, played here. Michael was the head coach in Salt Bay. Yeah. When Michael called a touchdown pass to beat West Virginia, I mean, to beat Wake Forest, it was only. Yeah. As soon as I got in the coach's locker room and got my phone, I sent his dad a message. 
I said, how proud can you be of Michael to stick him with it? And he made a huge play and a huge impact. Yeah. Walk on number 84. Back yeah. Yeah. I remember that. I was at that day. And, I, and his dad to this day, every time I see him, mentions me sending him that text about it. Yeah. And uh, when you, you said what we you were know, going to talk about today, and it, it, it jogged some of those stories. Um, the games are the games. They're going to happen. TV, radio, the games are the games. Uh, the wins and losses, they fade a little bit over time. Yeah. The wins are important. Sometimes I think you might learn more from the losses. Uh, at the present moment, you don't, because they stay. Yeah. But years later, you probably do. But the one thing you can never take away from any level of organized sport, you don't care if it's seventh grade, baseball or eighth grade basketball, any level of organized sports yeah. is the relationship, the lessons learned from doing things together, and the people you're around. The people you're around will be the same closest friends to your forever. Yeah. Because of what you shared on the field, in the locker room, on the bus trips, going to the games. And, you know, when I think about uh, it, it jogged my mind here because of what you know, Seamus put out. Uh, I can't guarantee you play a time. I can't guarantee how good an athlete is. Yeah. But, you know, you can guarantee that if you do things the right way, you'll leave a program as a better father, husband, citizen, and with a great degree in order to move on to the next phase of their life. And, and, Football's not going to last forever. Yeah. Very short-lived career. But there's other things that you learn from the game last all the time. You know, that's what I've kind of always prided myself in with my relationship with my players. Is that can I make a bigger impact besides the fact that I've taught them how to bench press a whole lot of weight? But they're really good at that too. Yeah. And I knew that too. We could really work that. But what else did I embark on? So I, I, I sent a message two days ago. I coached Tory Holt, great wide receiver at NC State. Big game, Tory Holt. Yeah. I sent him a message because the other day was his birthday. He sent me back a you know five minute text <laughs> on how much I meant to him and how much he appreciated. I sent him a birthday message. You know, so there are relationships that are built that you can never take away. And it's funny that you mentioned Tory Holt because in my coverage on site of the Jaguars for over a decade now. Tory was there toward the end of his career, yeah. And I went over and I shook hands with him and I was like, I was like, it's not even for an interview, I just wanna I said I love watching you play and, and everything that you know what your team did with the Rams and whatnot. I said I just wanted to shake your hand because seeing him in the locker room, I mean this is a Super Bowl champion superstar. And he's just hanging out in the you know Jacksonville locker room at the end of his career, you know, and playing the game that he loves, which is really cool. Complete class act. Him and his brother Terrence have the whole Brothers Foundation in Raleigh, North Carolina. They have a construction company. And Tory does a lot of stuff on the NFL Network and some different things too. But he has the whole Brothers Foundation that yeah. gives back to underprivileged kids. Complete class act. So you inspired a lot of people. Being in here with Coach Hicks for Mother's Cupboard in this wake-up call food challenge and really our breaking bread together. You inspired so many. Who inspired you? Well, my father passed away when I was young. And my high school coach, Joe Baker, uh, was probably one of the biggest influences ever in my life. Yeah. And um, I knew then that, yeah, I guess it's a trick he's saying now, pay it forward or whatever, but I knew then that what he did for me, that at some point I needed to be a coach, so I could do the same thing for other people. And then I've been, you know, and I've been around some great, great college coaches that shaped my whole career. Um, Dick Sheridan in North Carolina State, we were very, very good. We went eight straight bowl games. It was just a no nonsense. Um, very healthy, very accountable for every action. Yeah. Um, our players turned out we were the best line teams in the country. We just did things the right way and it worked. The guys appreciated it. 
and I came, you know, when I came here, I interviewed with Butch Davis at Miami, John L. Smith at Louisville, and Coach Castelloni within three days of each other. And once I met Coach Castelloni, I knew this is where I needed to be. I talked to Coach Castelloni about three weeks ago. Coach of defense line, Carolina Panthers, 72 years old. Because every time he tries to retire, somebody calls. <laughs> and uh, his daughter is a sophomore here. That's how much he taught at university. His daughter can be a sophomore here at Syracuse. What was it about Coach P? Did he, did he remind you of Coach Baker? No, he just, he was what he was. And, yeah. He knew it up front. He was so honest. No, too. I brought up three. You know, maybe towards the end, and uh, yeah, people said we didn't recruit as good as we did earlier, because he wasn't going to tell you the truth. He was going to recruit you. He thought you were going to be a linebacker, and he said you were going to be a linebacker. He wanted to hear you were going to be a running back. Well, yeah. you went to a school and said you were running back, and then they moved you to linebacker. But he would tell you the truth up front. Yeah. You know, it would be interesting to find how many players that didn't like maybe what he said in recruiting when he told them the truth, and then find out what they became where they went. And to look at that, to look at how many of them ended up where he said he would, they were going to be anyways, and if they would have come to Syracuse knowing that. I'm sorry. Awful, awful lot of them. But he was, he was so honest. The line I just came up with about, uh, you know, leaving as a better student, better yeah. person. So Coach Steve used to say when he'd sit in somebody's home and be recruiting, I can't guarantee you how much time you'll play or how good you'll be. But I'll tell your parents sitting in your house, I'll guarantee you'll leave with a degree and you'll be a better person when you leave than you were when you got here. And he was a firm believer in that. And the thing is, I mean, you look at when he was, in my opinion, unceremoniously let go and broke my heart because I grew up on so That's what I knew as Coach Pete. I was little, little when Coach Mack was finishing up and then it was Coach Pete. 87, baby. And, right. And 1987, shout out Rob Drummond. So, uh, Josh yes, Schwedes, John, Michael Owens, Todd Phil Cox, Tom McPherson, a lot of guys on those teams. Mark Apollo, Rob Moore, Rob Moore, yeah. So, Moose Johnston. So, a lot of great, great players on those teams. We had the Marcus Paul Foundation top tournament. Yeah, and Marcus Paul. That's it. And. Going off of, of that, is is there since you're still working at the university, is there a hope, is there a plan to do something this season to honor him? Is there going to be more of a focus? I know that's what you said the golf tournament, but during the football season, can we hope yeah. to see something there's Marcus some, Paul related? There's some things in the works. And, okay. They started a foundation for Marcus Paul. Um, they have 85 or 90 players here Marcus. Yeah, like they came in Sunday, we did a reception over at uh, Manly Bill House. <laughs> then they had the golf tournament and stuff to really like money. And uh, Marcus believed in uh, his high school, Ocala, Florida. The Boys and Girls Club there at Syracuse University. And uh, the foundation raises some money to give back to his high school, the Boys and Girls Club. And they sponsor like a scholarship that anybody wants to go and strengthen the conditions in Syracuse. That's awesome. Yeah. Great football player, NFL strength coach, but quality person. When he passed, <clears throat> how did you hear the news and how did, how did you kind of reflect on it? I got a phone call that was probably the first time. Passed out in the weight room at uh, Cowboys Complex. And, you know, like everybody was just shot in the day. System, we're talking about a you know, little fit guy, young, uh, no off the field, but no, no extracurricular thing, clean cut, well spoken, yeah. God fearing. I mean, you know, it was just a shock to everybody's system. Yeah. And um, one of my first phone calls was. Uh, Coach Marone was in Jack Jacksonville at the time. It was the Coach Marone because Coach Marone played the talk so much to Marco. Coach, I don't know if you didn't meet him. He was heard yeah. what happened to Marco. He saw him in Sports Illustrated. He passed away. He said he was on life support. Yeah, he 
he's already passed away, but that's kind of, they're not saying it for the family to get to the hospital. Yeah. But uh, class act all the way around. Um, it was really kind of one of them devastating blows that you don't know how to process. And that's why I'm one of his former teammates. I mean, there were guys here from all over. Like the first year we had a Daryl Johnson was here. This year, he got to come being the commissioner of the USFL. He was busy with games. There's guys from all over the country. And they could have easily had him in Florida or in Dallas or uh, you know, somewhere else. But it meant enough to market. Syracuse meant enough to market that they wanted to come back and do it here. You talk about, <laughs> you don't know, really know how to process. In a world where, I mean, it's common sense that the more people that you know and build relationships with, the higher the probability you're going to get that phone call at some point, right? And on Mother's Day of this year, and I know you know him because he coached under Schaefer, but Fred Reed, 54 years old, and I, I got the news at around, I want to say, 11 o'clock at night, and... I was there with my now fiance, Carrie, and she had fallen asleep, and I was just kind of going through social media and whatnot, and I got out of bed, and I just remember saying, no, 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 and I got on the floor, and I just started to cry. And you know that these people mean something to you, but that emotion that happens when something really good or something really, you know, sad, and I just sat on the floor and I reached out to all the coaches from that staff that I know. I reached out to Chuck Bull, I hadn't heard from him in forever. Uh, Tim Lester, uh, I think I reached out to Tim Dowst as well. Uh, Bobby Acosta, DeAndre Smith. And for the first time in a long time, I heard from Scott Schaefer. And it was extremely sad. And I reached out to Wolf as well. It was extremely sad to go to just have that and to realize how much over the last couple of years he became a part of my life. And we had just talked in April. And I wished him, and it was like late at night, like between 10 and 11 o'clock at night. And I try to wish as many people as I can on a holiday or something. I want to reach out. You're usually with people you love, but you want to reach out to everybody else you love. And so, like 10 and 11, I was, I was having Easter with my fiance, and I was like, you know what, let me just send out these messages. And in that moment, you think in your head, like, you're sending these out and you want to make sure that people you care about know. And you're like, should I go to bed? I'm exhausted. I've had a long day. But you're like, no, I want to do this. And that was the last message I sent him. And if I hadn't have sent him that and hadn't stayed up to do it, then that would have been, you know, a few months before that we had talked, maybe February or March. But to reach out to him in April, just happy Easter and have Easter back. But you think back on that, and it was a reminder to me that you never know your last message, your last phone call, the last time you'll see somebody, and how much it affects you. And I think it made all of us that have become like brothers stronger in that coaching staff. And it just makes you sit and realize like life really is extremely fleeting at times and you have to take advantage of the moments and you got to tell the people you care about that you love them and I, I sent out to Tim Lester I said I love you all and I hope you guys know it he said we do and we love you back and you know, Fred Reed was talking about a, just a quality individual and a really really good football coach yeah. great technician great teacher yeah. but he had you know when you if you looked at social media right after his passing the reaction from his players um, you can tell he was really, really well thought of um, for the kind of person he was. But you know, it's the same thing. If you say, listen to a phone call, you know, you're a young fuck. I'm getting older now. So a, lot of, a lot of real good friends of mine, and you get a phone call now, you don't know. And um, you know, luckily, I, you know, I've been looking away and working out and stuff all my life, so I'm helping as a horse. So, yeah. I might get hit by a bus, 